Now we'll look into the design of the reinforced concrete two-way slab in this video. As discussed earlier, the two-way slab is resting on all the four sides on beams or columns or walls. So as it is resting on all the four sides, it is bending in both X and Y directions. So there is a significant bending moments in both X and Y directions. Therefore, we have to provide the flexural reinforcement in both X and Y, that is shorter and long direction as well. Two-way slabs are usually stiffer and stronger than one-way slabs, and hence they tend to be uh, thinner than one-way slabs. So hey, if possible, wherever possible, two-way slabs are preferred. As you can see in the figure, uh, the slab is resting on all the four sides uh, on beams in this case. Uh, so there is a significant bending moment in both X and Y direction and thus we have to provide flexural reinforcement in both X and Y directions. Now as we keep on increasing the load, the center part of the slab will deflect downward. That means the, the corners of the slab will tend to curl upward. Now, if the corners are on restrained, that's fine. But if the corners are restrained against this uplift, then we can have these cracks in the corner. Therefore, for the two-way slab, apart from the flexural reinforcement in X and Y direction, we'll have to provide the torsional reinforcement in the corners as well. So we'll be talking about that one as well. And as discussed earlier, for the two-way slab, we have bending moment in both X and Y direction. As you can see, the maximum bending moment is at the mid-span. For example, at section AA, uh, the maximum bending moment in MX is maximum at the center span. And the distribution of this maximum bending moment long um, BB is like shown here. Again, uh, the maximum bending moment in MX is at the mid-span. Similarly, in the Y direction, the maximum bending moment is again occurring at the mid-span. MY is maximum at the mid-span. And the distribution of this maximum bending moment along um, AA is shown here. Now, if the two-way slab is overloaded, a pattern of yield lines will develop and the slab will fail uh, with the formation of yield lines as shown here. Uh, this is exactly um, the tributary area of the two-way slab as well. Um, as you can see, for the beam, for this beam, the tributary area of the two-way slab will be like this one. That means this beam will carry this trapezoidal load, whereas this beam will carry this triangular load. And similarly, this beam will carry this triangular load, and this beam will carry this trapezoidal load. Now for the simplified method for two-way slabs, um, the Australian design code in clause 6.10.3.2 gives the equations to calculate the maximum bending moment in both X and Y direction. So the maximum bending moment in X direction is this one. And the maximum bending moment in y direction at the mid span is m star y and they are given by this simplified equations using a coefficients uh, beta x and beta y and beta x and beta y can be obtained from as 3600 6.10.3.2a um, in here FD is the uniformly distributed factor design load per unit area and LX in both the cases it is LX um, is the shortest span. Um, so the beta X and beta Y are the coefficients we can obtain f um, based on the, the ACE conditions of the slab. Now, these are the nine different possible ACE conditions for the two-way slabs. Um, so, for example, the first ACE condition is a four ACE discontinuous. So, it is better to understand this ACE conditions from the figure here, as you can see here. That means the slab one here has four 
four sides continuous. That means there is a slab in this direction, this direction. In all four directions, there are slabs continuing. That means all four edges are continuous. So four edges continuous. So you can find the beta x from this table in table 6.10.3.2a. Now, the value of ly over lx uh, can be obtained from the span length. Um, ly is a longer span over the shorter span. So depending on that, you can interpret the value of beta x. Now, if um, one shot is, is discontinuous, that is the slab number two, that means only one shot is, is discontinuous, rest all three edges are continuous. So there is a continuation in all three edges. Then you can obtain um, the beta x from this one. So similarly, let's see number five, two long edges are discontinuous. That means if you can look here, two long edges are discontinuous, but the short edges are continuous in this case. And finally, the number nine, that means four edges are discontinuous. So number nine is a um, standalone slab here. All the four edges are discontinuous. That means there is no continuation in all the four sides. Then you can find beta x from this table. And beta y just depends on ly over lx. Then you can find beta y from this table again. Now, once we find beta x and beta y, you can substitute the values in this equation given by 6.10.3.2, and you can find the maximum positive bending moment in x and y direction. They are the maximum positive bending moment at the mid span in x and y direction per unit width of the span in x and lx and ly directions. Now, once you find the maximum positive moment, you can find the area of the reinforcement for that maximum um, moment, exactly like what we did for one way slab, considering one meter long span. So you can find out what is the area of reinforcement required for that given M star positive in X direction or Y direction. So using this equation, you can is estimate what is the area of reinforcement required in both X and Y direction. So this one is for the X direction and similarly for the positive Y direction moment, what would be the area of reinforcement required? We can find out as well. And similarly, the spacing we can find out as well. And so one we, once we find the area of reinforcement required, we can find out the spacing using AB over AST, where AST is required from here for X direction and AB is the diameter of one bar. Now, uh, the area of reinforcement that we are providing for the mid span, that is the positive bending moment in X and Y direction, needs to be provided only in the central region as um, indicated in the shaded area here. Um, because the, the maximum moment occurs only in the central region at the ends, at the support, um, the moment is positive bending moment is very small. In fact, the negative moment exists there. So uh, you do not need to continue the uh, the total reinforcement in all over the slab. It only needs to be distributed in the central region. That means uh, around three quarter of LX and three quarter of LY. That's where the, the main positive um, bending moment reinforcement needs to be placed. And for the outside region, that is the remaining reason, we only need to provide the minimum uh, reinforcement as per the code that is given in clause 9.1.1.b. So for this outer reason, uh, the, the, the positive reinforcement at the bottom should continue only the minimum amount of reinforcement for the crack control perspective. So that means um, some of the reinforcement bars can be cut at, uh, around this part so that only the minimum amount of reinforcement extends towards the, the ends. Now for the negative bending moment at the supports, um, we can obtain them by clause 6.10.3.2b and 2c. The negative moments at the support depend on whether it is the A's is continuous or discontinuous. For example, if you have a slab like this one, two-way slab, and it, there is a continuing slab in this direction, for example, and also in this direction, there is another continuing slab here. Uh, these are the slab continuing in these two directions and other two directions, there are no continuation of the slab. That means the negative bending moment at the support. So at the support, there are negative bending moment here. So this negative bending moment 
at the continuous A's is given as 1.33 times M's, Mx star. That means the 1.33 times the maximum positive bending moment will exist at the support, the negative bending moment. Now, similarly, for MY, uh, the, for the continuous is, the negative bending moment is 1.33 times MY star. MX star and MY star are the positive bending moment in X and Y direction that obtain from previous equation as shown before. And for the discontinuous is, here, the negative bending moment in X direction is 0 0.5 times the maximum positive bending moment computed earlier and for the y also the negative bending moment is 0 0.5 times m star y again so these are obtained from these equations and throughout the slab we have to make sure that we are providing at least the minimum tensile reinforcement according to clause 9.1.1.b uh, for the ductility purpose that means for the slab to be ductile that means it doesn't have any brittle failure we have to make sure that it has minimum amount of reinforcement so whatever reinforcement that we calculate from the bending moment requirement in both x and y direction in in both positive and negative moments uh, reasons we have to make sure that the re reinforcement that we provide is at least greater than AST mean and given by this equation and from the crack control perspective again we have to ensure that we provide the minimum amount of reinforcement as given in clause 8.1.6.1 in all directions and also apart from that the center to center spacing of the bars that we calculate shouldn't exceed two times the depth of the slab or 300 millimeter in all primary direction. That means in both X and Y direction, it shouldn't exceed two times the depth of the slab and 300 millimeter. Now, as discussed earlier, in the two-way slabs, the slabs at the corners tend to curl upward as the center part of the slab deflects downward. Now, if this curling up is restricted by the existence of the beams or slabs at the corners, then there, there can be the possibility of having this kind of cracks at the corners. So to prevent these cracks, we need to provide the torsional reinforcement at the corners of the two-way slabs. And the torsional reinforcement that we need to provide for this uh, corner reinforcement is given in clause 9.1.3.3e. Uh, this clause requires that an exter exterior corner of a two-way slab supported on all four sides and restrained against the uplift, reinforcement shall be provided at both the top and bottom of the slab. So for the, there should be a two-layer of um, corner reinforcement, top and bottom, for exterior corner of a two-way slab where the uplift is restricted. Now as you've seen here, at this corner, it is continuous. So we don't need to provide any corner reinforcement. We need to provide the corner reinforcement only where it is discontinuous in one side or both the side. At the point B, at the corner B, it is discontinuous over both sides, whereas in co corner A, it is continuous over this side and discontinuous over other side. At corner C, it is continuous over this side, but discontinuous over the other side. So in both the cases, we need to provide corner reinforcement at corner A, B, and C. However, at this discontinuous corner, we don't need to provide corner reinforcement. Now, for the exterior corner where both the A's are discontinuous, like in corner B in this example, the area of reinforcement that we have to provide in two layers, top and bottom layers, for for the corner cracking prevention or, um, is given by it, this equation in clause 9.1.3.3. That means the area of the reinforcement that we need to provide in both X and Y direction, there should be a mesh of um, steel in the top layer as well as the bottom layer. And at the top layer, the area of reinforcement in both X direction and the Y direction should be at least 75% of AST, where AST is the maximum positive steel for the mid-span. So we calculate the maximum positive steel for the mid-span for, for the slab and 75% of that should go into two layers at corner B, where, which is both A's is discontinuous. 
Now for the corner A and C in this figure, which are one is discontinuous and one is continuous, for this um, the the corner reinforcement that we need to provide is two layers of 0.5 ASC. That means 50% of the maximum positive bending moment steel we need to provide as the corner reinforcement in both X and Y direction and two layers, top and bottom layer as well, to prevent the crack in the corner corners. And uh, for the deflection control for the two-way slab, we again follow the deem to comply span to def ratio for reinforced concrete slab as per clause 9.4.4.1. As you can see here, um, the effective span over the def ratio uh, for the two-way slab should not be greater than the equation given shown in the right hand side where um, K3 and K4 parameters are given here. Uh, for two-way slab, K3 is taken as one, and K4 for two-way slab is uh, obtained from the table 9.4.4.2 based on the ACE conditions and LY over LX span ratio. And again, FDF is the effective uh, design service load. This is for the service level limit state. So FDF is the effective design service load obtained from these equations and LEF is effective span and delta over LEF is obtained from clause 2.3.2. So putting back into this equation, we can find out what is the minimum depth required for the slab so that it doesn't have any deflection problem. So um, once you design the slab or before designing the slab, you can find out the depth of the slab to meet this um, deemed to comply span to depth ratio as well.